See. Uh, to what extent are cadets' self-defense rights respected on campus? Are they allowed to be armed for the most part? This video is brought to you by ForkFest.Party. It's gonna be a party. So what else? Well, I'm just gonna stand here and continue doing my thing, I guess. Are you going to uh, attend the ceremony? I probably will pop my head in. Yeah. Oh, wait, here's another question, actually. Uh, to what extent are cadets' self-defense rights respected on campus? Are they allowed to be armed for the most part? No, they're not armed. Nope. <sighs> to what extent is but to what extent does that cause uh, a security risk for your institution? Well, we don't really have that many security risk at the Air Force Academy. If somebody, of course, provide some kind of security threat. We have the our security forces squadron. But you, you know the saying, the police, you know, the, the police are usually minutes away when seconds are, are all you have. That's true. This is true of every military installation. But the, the law enforcement uh, agency on a military installation are our security forces. Squadron. But they're, I mean, how can they get to, if they, you know, if you remember what happened at Killeen? Uh, the, 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 the soldiers were helpless because of the fact that they were not able to, they, most of them weren't armed. We're not going to arm our cadets. But we're not going to arm anybody who's unauthorized to be armed. I'm not asking you to, but can you, if you considered at least a letting them exercise their Second Amendment rights? Well, we're not going to arm anybody other than those people who are authorized to be armed, and those are the security forces. Like well, well, there's this there's this government idea that the only people who are armed are the people that the government arms. Well, but people can be allowed to be armed without the government having to fund it. Well, the military installation, okay, the people who are primarily authorized to carry firearms or our security forces squad. Sounds like it sounds like Katrina after the flood. I'm just telling you what the the, the policy and the regulations are. Have you ever known a gun free zone that was safer than one that wasn't a gun free zone? I'm gonna get into that discussion. Okay. All I'm gonna say All right. is on a military installation is an Air Force Academy installation in particular. The security forces or a law enforcement branch <laughs> They're here to maintain law and order. Uh, yes. They carry firearms. Yeah. There may be some other agencies that may also authorize the carrying of firearms. I'm not aware of those. I do know our security forces are, but the rank and file of the members of the Air Force Academy, the civilian population, the military population, are not authorized to carry firearms unless they're unless they're um, delegated to do that job as a special duty in support of the, to supplement the security forces squadron. Okay. And sometimes that does happen. All right. Thanks, Mr. Wedding. I never realized how many 4,000 cadets are in DC. <laughs> there are no uh, indigenous people from uh, New Hampshire? There are a lot of indigenous people who like freedom. <laughs> I think we all like freedom. Folks, I guess you're about to be working for Donald Trump. Can you explain to me how that's ethical? Gentlemen, I understand you're about to be working for, or maybe you're already working for Donald Trump. Can you explain to me how that's ethical? No further questions. Oh, I can continue to ask questions, I think. You're not going to stop me, are you? Question, sir. Is it ethical for you to work for Donald Trump? Why? <laughs> You've probably heard of Pork Fest, but have you heard of Fork Fest? It's a decentralized alternative. It's also at Rogers Campground at a slightly different time. You don't even need a ticket. Visit ForkFest.Party. It's gonna be a party.